disgusting loser uses his SS rank powers to save the world when a virus claps people in real life. Tashiro is a typical disgusting ugly loser who cleans his room once every 100 years. To make it special, he completely quit school and became a shut-in disgusting nerd. He hates every member of his family, especially his father. During his childhood, Tashiro was a happy kid with a good relationship with his family. His father was a famous programmer and used to teach Tashiro how to become a developer. One day, Tashiro was having so much fun learning from his father when his sister, Aya, brought them some tea. Despite being careful, Aya ended up spilling the drink. Their father got extremely mad and ended up aggressively pushing her away. Despite seeing Aya in tears, this garbage piece of a father yelled at her to get out. Tashiro tried to calm down his father, mentioning the computer was safe and he just finished the last code. The father shifted the attention to Tashiro, excited by the project. However, one day, Aya forgot her notebook at school. Despite being past 10 o'clock, nighttime, their trash father ordered her to go back alone to school and pick it up. The streets were well lit, and it was only a five-minute walk. However, Aya never returned. She was later found sliced as a meat roll inside a cardboard box. Since then, Tashiro has become a disgusting shut in who spends his entire days in his room playing a game named Planet. One day, while playing, some airships are attacked by pirates. Two kids hopped on a motorcycle together, chasing a big monster that the pirates also wanted. The kid driving the motorcycle started complaining about how long the chase was, but the other kid with the shooting skills told him to keep going. Finally, they ran into a fiery red dragon, the big target they were after. They were determined to catch it, even though one of them warned that they might end up at a place called Twilight Hill. It's where a bunch of super strong players in the game, the Akabane family, hung out. Even though the first kid wanted to quit, the shooter was super determined. As they got closer to a mansion, the dragon let out a loud roar. The mansion's doors opened, and a young boy named Ishii, who was also known as Teishiro, showed up. He jumped high into the air and summoned a sword to chop the dragon's head off like it was no big deal. Then, he started collecting all the cool stuff the dragon had. The shooter asked for some of the dragon's treasure, but Ishii said no way. He reminded them that he had just killed the dragon they'd been chasing for days and said they were useless. He told them not to argue and threatened to get rid of them. In the virtual world, when a character gets knocked out, it doesn't really hurt them in real life, but it can mess up their game stats. The kid driving the motorcycle convinces Ishii to calm down and put his sword away. Ishii says he was just joking and suggests they go meet his boss to sort out the loot from the dragon they defeated. As the two players step into the mansion, they get a big surprise. They thought it would be all dark and dungeon-like, but it's actually a cozy family home. They meet Mei, who plays the role of the Akabane family's mom. She's in the kitchen, cooking, and offers them tea, treating them like guests. Then, Ishii's in-game brother shows up. His name is A, six A's in a row, but they just call him A. It seems like he fell asleep on the keyboard when he was naming his character. He's really friendly and even invites them to have lunch. Mei uses her healing magic to make their game characters feel better and all healed up. The two players can't believe what's going on. They stand there nervously when Shiro enters the scene. He's the big leader and father-like figure of the Akabane family. He's got a huge, muscular presence that makes the two players feel pretty small. Ishii explains the whole deal with the Red Dragon and the loot disagreement to Shiro. Surprisingly, Shiro tells Ishii to give back the loot to the other players. He says there have been problems in the game when high-level players keep everything for themselves. Ishii agrees, and that evening, the players thank Shiro from the bottom of their hearts. Shiro asks Mei to teleport them to the nearest city, and she's happy to help. Back at the mansion, Ishii feels a bit down about losing the loot, but Shiro cheers him up. He points out that taking down the dragon with just one hit shows how much he's grown. Ishii turns red and blushes, while playfully teases him for not keeping a straight face when he's praised. Mei comes in with a big bowl of food and asks them to set the table for dinner, which they do. While they're enjoying their meal, they notice the chandelier light flickering. Mei comments on how the game pays attention to tiny details, and they think the game makers must be perfectionists. The three guys stand up to fix the light and have a good laugh about how in sync they are. Mei says the place feels just like a real home which makes Ishii blush even more. In the real world, Teishiro, who is the real-life Ishii, takes off his gaming goggles in a messy room. He's got a sore, red eye and grumbles about being hungry and dealing with difficult people in the real world. When he tries to stand up, he stumbles and falls onto his bed. He heads downstairs, hoping for some food, but there's nothing waiting for him, which makes him frustrated. As he goes downstairs, he runs into his younger brother, Asuma Arama, and there's tension between them. 
Ishii steps back, avoiding eye contact with his brother. He doesn't like Asuma, who's a super smart student and always acts like he's better than him. Asuma just walks past him, and Tashiro goes to the kitchen. He finds his dad, Kajiro Arama, sitting at the table, eating. Teishiro doesn't think much of his dad and calls him worthless. Teishiro's looking in the fridge for food, and his dad offers to share his meal. This bugs Teishiro, and he wishes his dad would stop talking to him. Kajiro tries to say something to his son, but he doesn't finish, and that makes Teishiro even more frustrated. Just when Teishiro's about to argue, the light in the room starts flickering. His dad asks him for help changing the light bulb, saying his back hurts. At first, Teishiro walks away, but then he has a change of heart. He offers to fix the light and says his dad shouldn't strain himself because he's older. But that comment annoys his dad, and he scolds Teishiro for calling him old. Feeling down after this argument, Teishiro gives up on the light and goes back to his room. He's really frustrated with the real world, so he puts on his gaming goggles and goes back to the virtual world. In the game of Planet, Ishii talks to Mei, who's taking care of a plant. He playfully teases her, saying he's surprised that such a nice girl never gets into battles and seems to do chores all the time. Mei wonders if Ishii's teasing her, but he quickly says sorry and explains he didn't mean it that way. He actually wants her to be his healer because he's going to a dungeon for a big battle, and she agrees to help. She notices he seems grumpy, but he denies it. Mei suggests that Ishii tries something different, like gardening. As they work in the garden, Mei admits she hasn't played many games before, and Planet is her first and only game. Ishii asks if she's having fun in the game, and she says yes, especially because of their in-game family. Then, a shows up and invites them inside to see something. They find a message from the pirates declaring war, and Ishii gets super mad, ready to fight back because he thinks the pirates are asking for trouble. A tells him to be careful and wait for Shiro's decision. But Mei tells them that Shiro won't be playing the game for a while because he's in the hospital, and that shocks the boys. Ishii panics and shakes Mei while asking about Shiro's condition, but a steps in to try and calm him down. When Ishii finally understands what's going on, his anger goes away. All of a sudden, they hear a loud noise outside and find that the garden is on fire from a pirate battleship's bomb attack. Ishii is super mad, especially when he sees Mei feeling really sad about her ruined garden. Furious, Ishii goes all out against the pirate's battleship on top of the mansion before A can stop him. He ends up destroying it. Even though they won, Mei is still sad about her garden, but A promises to get her more plants. Ishii keeps worrying about Shiro, but A reminds him of their family rule not to get into each other's private stuff. To cheer up, Mei suggests they go to a dungeon for a battle, just like Ishii wanted. However, A says he's got some stuff to do and logs out. In the real world, Teishiro hears a knock on his door and takes off his gaming goggles. Asuma tells him that their dad is in the hospital, which surprises and worries Teishiro. At first, he doesn't want to care about his dad's condition, but eventually, he agrees with a sad okay. Asuma visits their dad in the hospital but has to leave for exams. He tells their dad what's going on, but their dad seems more interested in his newspaper and doesn't seem to care much. Back in the game of Planet, the big shot leaders are having a meeting to talk about whether they should go to war to get rid of the pirate problem in the game. At the pirate hideout, Nagato scolds two of his crew members for doing stuff without permission and gives them a good talking to. Shigatora steps in to calm Nagato down but still kicks the two troublemakers out for breaking the rules. Pleading for mercy, the young pirate captain, Pico, asks for kindness. She says that their war declaration hasn't gotten a response yet and should be used as a warning. Even though Shigatora is worried about making the strong Granada organization mad, Pico stays determined and promises to get rid of him if he disagrees. She says their mission is to wipe out the Akabane family, but Shigatora reminds her that their main goal is the Black Bird on planet. It's said to be at Twilight Hill, and having that hill would give them the Black Bird and its prize of 300 million yen. That would make them strong enough to take on Granada and rule the pirates. Pico likes Shigatora's idea and thanks him for it. Meanwhile, there are two important people, Sasumata and Leon, who are part of the executive team. They talk about the pirates attacking the Akabane family with just one battleship and think it's a dumb move. But it seems like this will change the whole game situation. Now, let's go back to Teishiro, who's napping with his gaming goggles on. All of a sudden, he wakes up because his brother is knocking on the door. His brother tells him that their dad will be in the hospital for a while because he has a hernia. Teishiro is still mad about the situation and doesn't really care. As Shiro returned, the group received a warning from the pirates, declaring war on them. Ishii, thinking he could handle it alone, 
was in for a surprise when he learned there were about 3,000 pirates. So, he turned to Shiro for help. But instead of fighting, Shiro suggested they talk to the pirates. When they arrived at the pirates' hideout, they found themselves surrounded by pirate crews ready for action. Ishii got nervous, but Shiro and A told him he could leave if he was scared. But Ishii stood his ground and revealed he just wanted to avoid someone. Finally, they met Shigeru and his crew, who guided them to the captain's office. Ishii offered to stay behind, not wanting to go inside. Shiro, facing Pico, asked her to withdraw the war declaration. Pico wanted something in return and asked Shiro what he was willing to give up. Shiro suggested two dungeons, a castle, and a cave, but Pico said that wasn't enough. She wanted all their dungeons in the Twilight Hill. She mentioned that the hill was famous for the Black Bird, with a real-world reward of 300 million yen. She and Shiro both wanted it. A pointed out that they couldn't give up the hill because they lived there. Pico admitted her demand was a bit much but insisted on sticking to her pirate ways and suggested they should be grateful for the chance to negotiate. A asked if there was anything more they could offer. Pico surprised everyone by saying she'd be okay with Ishii as part of the deal. A thought it sounded fair. But just then, Ishii burst into the room, calling Pico a crazy pirate stalker and said he'd rather delete his character than work for her. Pico blushed when she saw Ishii and wanted Shiro to decide. Instead, Shiro used his explosive fist to break the room. Luckily, Shigeru caught Pico as everything exploded. Shiro said no to Pico's demand because he saw Ishii as family, which made Ishii blush. Pirate subordinates shot missiles at Shiro while he was in the air, but he easily destroyed them with his explosive fist. Pico talked to Ishii, reminiscing about their past when he promised to be with her, but Ishii got upset and told her to be quiet. In a flashback, Ishii was on some ruins and talked about conquering everything, which used to impress Pico. But now, Ishii thought it was weird. I didn't know about this and just made fun of Ishii, calling him a weirdo and laughing about his rebellious face. Pico said she made their guild for both of them and would keep fighting the Akabean family until Ishii was hers. Ishii kept yelling and saying mean things to her. Before Shiro left, he asked Pico if she ever saw Ishii smile when they were together, and she said no. Shiro surprised her by saying that Ishii smiles with them every day. Then, Shiro talked about getting ready for war and told Pico to send her 3,000 troops if she wanted to fight. Shiro left, and Pico felt sad but didn't let it get to her. She said sorry to Shigeru, and they went to fight the Akabane family. Back at their mansion, they got more war alerts. Shiro suggested making a big barrier over the hill. Mei asked if they could make such a huge barrier. Mei said they could use some items to make it better. Mei and Ishii went into a forest with a magic amplifier shaped like a chicken to put on the hill for the barrier. Mei mentioned they hadn't played like this in a while, but Ishii said they weren't playing, and he had to be serious. Mei said they were playing because they were in a game. Ishii paused and told A that his way of thinking was why he's the weakest in their family. He talked about their family nickname, the Gang of Addicts, which came from him and Shiro doing most of the work. A didn't like being called a gaming addict. He thought life wasn't fun if you spent all your time playing games and ignoring the real world. He didn't like people who got too obsessed with games. Ishii was shocked and logged out of the game. Teishiro, who was playing as Ishii, came back and said he was hungry. His stomach hurt because he hadn't eaten in three days, and his lips were dry. He still didn't like the real world and found it suffocating. Teishiro went to the kitchen to find food but couldn't because the fridge was empty. Then, his brother Asuma came in. Teishiro was afraid of what his brother might think of him. His stomach growled, which Teishiro didn't like. Asuma called him out for being hungry and broke, and suggested he get a job. Teishiro hoped Asuma would leave him alone, but instead, his brother offered to cook his favorite meal. Asuma started cooking without waiting for an answer. As Asuma cooked, he talked about the food they liked and didn't like. Teishiro was about to reply, but Asuma told him to sit. Asuma served a tasty-looking omelette rice, and at first, Teishiro hesitated, but then he quickly started eating. He worried that Asuma pitied him for not being able to cook and hoped his brother didn't expect something in return. Teishiro said the food was good, and at that moment, Asuma told him to get a job or go outside. He said they should go visit someone named Aya. Teishiro felt like Asuma was treating him badly, and when Asuma mentioned Aya, he almost felt sick. Asuma realized he went too far and stopped talking about it. Back in the game world, Teishiro joined A. 
who was waiting for him. Suddenly, they heard missile explosions. It turned out that Mei and Shiro were behind the missile attacks, taking on the pirate battleships. Shiro managed to destroy all the battleships and bring peace. Ei and Ishii met up with them, and Shiro told them they beat the 50 battleships, which were piloted by low-level players. Ei said the pirates didn't stand much of a chance to begin with, but Shiro explained they got help from Granada, who sent extra battleships along with Sasumata and Leon. The group thanked the Granada executives, though Ishii gave them a cold look, thinking Granada also wanted the 300 million yen. Leon said their main concern was the Akabane family's stability because they supplied monster loot. They talked about their plan to use a magic amplifier to make a barrier around the hill and the mansion, and Leon liked the idea. After the Granada people left, they set up the magic amplifier. Shiro told them they had two months to find the Blackbird before the barrier disappeared. I asked Ishii what he planned to do with the money, and Ishii imagined staying home all the time. I asked Shiro why he wanted to find the Blackbird, and Shiro said he was also interested in the money. They explained that she didn't care about the money, she just wanted everyone to be healthy. Ishii didn't trust Leon when he said he didn't want the money, but Shiro vouched for him, saying Leon wasn't a liar and was just playing the game for fun. When they got home, they found their place completely wrecked. Meanwhile, Pico found out they couldn't get through the Akabane's protective barrier when Leon and Sasumata came to visit. Leon didn't like how the pirates were doing things and warned them to stop fighting the Akabane family. Pico argued that what they were doing was allowed by the game's rules, which made Leon mad. Leon kept making offers and even called Pico little. In an instant, Pico cut off Leon's head and said the pirates would crush the Akabane family. As she left with her group, Leon, who somehow survived, looked satisfied because things were going according to his plan. Back with the Akabane family, Ishii found a black feather hidden in the rubble, which surprised everyone. They looked up and saw lots of black feathers swirling in the sky. Shiro quickly told them to follow the feathers, but they couldn't keep following the feathers because they all joined together to make a huge, headless, dragon-like thing. A red dragon showed up again, and Shiro thinks it's the same one Ishii defeated yesterday. But, Shiro's more worried because the Blackbird is using the dragon's body. Without wasting time, they get ready to fight. Mei puts on armor to protect them. Ishii is the first to attack, but his attack doesn't hurt the dragon. Mei tries to explain, but this dragon seems way tougher than a normal red dragon. Then, the headless dragon flaps its wings super hard, making strong winds that push them back. Shiro stays strong, shielding everyone from the wind. When the wind stops, Shiro tries to punch the dragon, but it doesn't work. Mei tells them to look at the pirate ships. They've stopped attacking. Shiro tells everyone to focus on the dragon, thinking it's the only way to figure out what's up with the black bird. He tells Ishii to hit the dragon's weak spot with his sword, and Mei makes the sword stronger. Shiro and Ishii fly up into the air, with Shiro using his explosive fist to launch Ishii at the dragon. They hit it, but it's not enough, and the dragon is getting close to Mei and A. Mei is the team's healer, and A decides it's better to push her away just in case he gets hurt. Sadly, the dragon crushes A all by himself. In the real world, Arima's goggles go haywire, and he crashes to the ground. Teishiro hears the crash but keeps on playing the game, not checking what's up. Pico wonders why Ishii can't beat the dragon, and Leon tells Sasumata that A is in big trouble if they're fighting the black bird, the scary final boss. As Leon expected, Mei tries to heal A, but can only find his game character, not his real body. Ishii is confused because it seems like A stopped playing the game. Shiro looks worried. Then, Leon says the headless dragon is the black bird, a super tough monster. Suddenly, Shiro tells Ishii and Mei to log out. They ask why, but he gets all serious and tells them to do it, so they do. Right after they log out, the headless dragon grows black wings. Shiro says it's the black bird and logs out too, promising to come back and beat it. Kajiro, who had just been playing the game as Shiro, grabs his phone and calls for an ambulance. He tells them to go to A.S. address. He says the black bird is awake, and he's starting Operation Goodnight World. Kajiro leaves his room even though the nurse tries to stop him. He's on a mission. Teishiro is thinking about going back into the game when he hears his name from his brother's room. He knocks on the door, but there's no answer at first. Then, Asuma calls his name again, but it's fainter. Teishiro realizes he hasn't been to his brother's room in a while. When he opens the door, he's really surprised. Asuma is sitting there looking weak and says he's been trying to get Teishiro's attention. He says his left side hurts. At first, Teishiro thinks it might be a joke, but then he sees the A character on the computer screen. He's confused. An ambulance comes to take Asuma, and Teishiro comforts him, saying he'll be okay. 
he's with him at the hospital. The doctor says Asuma is stable but needs tests, so he has to stay overnight. When they're alone, Asuma says Tashiro's name, and Tashiro gets emotional and cries. Asuma tries to act like he's okay, but Tashiro brings up their little sister's loss, and Asuma says sorry for making him worry. Curiosity gets the best of Tashiro, and he asks if Asuma is playing the planet game. Asuma at first says no, but then he gets kind of defensive, saying he's not really playing, even though he has an account and logs in. Tashiro wants to know why Asuma is doing this, and Asuma admits he's helping a friend in the game get back to the real world. Tashiro doesn't tell Asuma that he's actually Ishii in the game, and he hopes Asuma doesn't find out. He leaves the room suddenly, not wanting things to change between them in the game. The doctor talks to Asuma to figure out how he got into this situation. Asuma says he got shocked by the game gear, but the doctor doesn't get it. Asuma tells him to ask his dad, Kajiro, because he worked with the company that made Planet and created the game. Teishiro is upset as he goes home and doesn't want their family to fall apart if Asuma figures out he's Ishii. He's in a hurry to get home and feels frustrated, but when he tries to log into the game, the passcode doesn't work. Teishiro realizes someone hacked his game and locked him out. He tries to hack the game back. In a memory, little Teishiro asks his dad to teach him about computers. His dad teaches him coding. Now, grown-up Teishiro has hacked the game but needs a passcode. He remembers his sister spilling tea when their dad was teaching him coding. She says sorry, but their dad gets mad, and she cries. Teishiro calms his dad, saying the computer is okay. His sister, Aya, is taken away by their mom and Asuma. Teishiro is worried but focuses on learning from his dad. In the flashback, his dad types hello world on the screen, saying it's the first thing a programmer learns, the start of a programmer's world. After the memory, Teishiro types hello world as the passcode but changes it to F world. This lets him hack the game and get back in. We then see how Aya's disappearance affected Teishiro's mother in the past. She became schizophrenic. She saw and talked to Aya, always refusing to get any kind of help. She always seemed really tired and slow, like a zombie. She headed for the front door. The young Teishiro watched her from the stairs, but she didn't say anything and just walked out. Back to the present, Ishii finds a fallen feather. He wondered if it came from the black bird, but the protective barrier was still up, so the bird couldn't have gotten out. Suddenly, there were explosions as flying ships tried to break the barrier. On one of the ships, the crew got frustrated because they couldn't break the barrier. A girl with pink hair wanted to know about the black bird they saw. The captain, who was short and shouted orders, told the crew to break the barrier. But the person in charge of the cannons said they were out of cannonballs. This barrier was special, it was made by Shiro and super strong. It would take a big force to break it. The captain asked Shiga how important it was to catch the black bird. Shiga said he'd do it no matter what. The captain called him greedy, but Shiga said it didn't fit him. The captain knew he was a valuable member of the pirate guild always thinking about profit and loss. Shiga said in the real world, he studied business stuff. Surprisingly, the captain said she wasn't interested in the black bird, she wanted Ishii. Shiga said she could go after Ishii and leave the black bird to them. They shook hands. In the real world, the people playing the game were amazed. Both the captain and Shigo got a pirate emblem on their hands. The captain gave Shigo all the power. The crew was sad to see the captain step down. They thought it was because of what Leon said. But the captain said being a pirate was just an addition. One crew member wore a mask and said he was a teacher in real life, but he liked stealing in the game more than teaching. Another crew member said being pirates let them be mischievous and have fun. While they were talking, Leon's crew and a peculiar boy named Sasumata interrupted them. The captain was mad because they didn't learn from the last time they met. Sasumata showed a product from the Granada company called the Magic Producer that could dissolve the barrier. He offered it to them for a good price, trying to make a business deal. But the captain's crew didn't fall for it. The captain got really angry and attacked the barrier with her axe, breaking it. She told Shiga he was in charge, and she went on her mission. Shiga agreed. The captain went into the barrier and faced Ishii. Asuma was in the hospital, and a mysterious girl came to him. He didn't know her, but she seemed to know him. She asked him not to tell his dad what happened because it could mess up their plan to uncover the family truth. She respected his family and said goodbye. Meanwhile, the captain and Ishii had a big fight. She told him she'd tell him what to do next if he won. He agreed, thinking he couldn't lose. She attacked him and, to his surprise, he saw her skill stats were over 2000. He attacked with a bunch of swords, but she dodged. He had all 72 swords of Solomon, which made her happy because it was his dream. Then, he sent all the swords at her. The captain remembered how they first met. She was really sad and found someone who looked sad too. 
She asked if they could be friends, but he attacked her. They started to have fun fighting together. In a battle, Ishii made a big final attack that knocked the captain to the ground. She started crying because she couldn't accept losing. Ishii told her she needed to get stronger, but she meant she didn't want him to join the Akabane family and stay with her in the guild. He moved closer and told her about his plans after winning the fight, like inviting her to a party. They were chasing the bird because the pirates could help. The mysterious girl went to headquarters and told her boss that they had Asuma and the other players. Ishii and Pico were looking for the bird and found another feather. Ishii said he'd go after it alone if needed. The captain asked why he wanted her to join him. He said he liked spending time with her but had stopped because she wanted to meet in the real world. She explained that the game wasn't much without the real world and that being a pirate meant facing reality with a smile. Ishii asked Pico if she wanted to join the Akabane family, but he realized he made a mistake, mixing her up with her sister. Pico said she couldn't leave the pirates. She made the guild so he could make friends. Ishii said the internet was against pirates. Pico said a good leader takes the blame so the team can have fun. She asked if he wanted to leave, saying they wouldn't meet anymore. In Ishii's head, he stayed away from her because he had feelings for her and wanted to meet in real life, but he didn't know how to deal with those feelings. It was a big surprise when Shiga turned on everyone and kicked them out of the guild. He said he was with Leon and didn't want society's outcasts. This shocked everyone, including Pico, and Shiga became the new leader of the guild. Shiga had started a big game group with over 3,000 players two years ago. But now, it was causing problems for their planet. Some secret agents in the group were against it, and they thought they were heroes, trying to stop troublemakers. Then, one person in the group said Shiga was only doing it for money, and that was true. But another guy with white hair defended him, saying he did it because he loved the planet and wanted to make it better. Just then, Pico showed up. She asked Shiga what he was up to, and he said he was planning to fight against the Akabain family. He knew Pico was determined to find Ishii, and she was falling into his trap. Shiga said he wanted to quit the game, but Pico, being a good leader, told him he didn't have to. This made Shiga laugh because he only cared about money, not what Pico thought. He even made fun of the group's motto, which made one member so mad he tried to attack Shiga. Shiga punched him and kept making fun of their fake friendship. That's when Ishii stepped in. He told everyone how the game helped him escape a messed up real world. Shiga and Ishii argued a lot about what they believed. Ishii lost it when Shiga said he hated being in the group. He got really mad and used his power to destroy the whole ship. He knew he made a mistake leaving Pico alone and wanted to make things right. Ishii told Pico he was going to join the pirate group. While the person who made the game took a snack break, he knew the world would soon be mad at him. There was a guy named Sasumata who wanted to help Shiga get better, but Shiga said not to bother. Shiga said they had to save the ship because without it, they'd have no safe place and the group's weapons wouldn't work. Then, a white-haired guy used his special power to stop the ship from falling. He could control gravity, which was pretty cool. Ishii had a condition for Pico. He wanted to be the leader because things were all messed up. She said yes. Ishii also said he'd be in the Akabane family and the group. Pico was super happy about this. He said they didn't need all 3,000 players, just a few they could trust. The original crew decided to join the new group, even though Ishii wasn't sure about them at first. But Pico had told him all about them, so he agreed. Then, a bright light appeared, and Pico knew it was Shiga. Magato said Shiga was now the leader, and he activated a super weapon called Pirate Centurion, which only the leader could use. It was like the power of 3,000 pirates in one. Ishii tried to attack Shiga with a bunch of swords, but Shiga stopped it easily with just one hand. Shiga kept making fun of their fake online friendships, but Ishii didn't let it bother him. He was determined to make the group better. Ishii attacked Shiga again. Meanwhile, the person who made the game asked his helper why Ishii could still play, even though they banned him. She thought maybe Ishii figured out a way to get back in. The game maker was also the boss of the Akabane family, and he knew he had to get back in the game. Shiga attacked Ishii, and Ishii lost his arm. He was getting ready for another attack. But Ishii used his powers to stop Shiga by sticking swords into his shadows. Shiga asked for help from Leon. But Leon said no because he was afraid of making Shiro mad. Shiga knew that his special moves didn't last long, so he managed to move his arms and block Ishii's attack. Pico told Ishii to leave Shiga alone and said they should go away. But Ishii said she should be more mad at him. Pico wasn't mad at him, though. She believed Shiga's idea that this was just a game. Ishii and Shiga argued, and Pico smiled, thinking about Ishii and Shiga meeting in real life someday. She wanted to talk about real-life stuff, like walking around and smelling flowers, things they couldn't do in the game. Pico thought if Ishii faced the challenges of the real world, he'd see there were good things there too. 
She told him not to worry about Shiga and reminded him that it was just a game. But she was worried that Ishii might get mad. She wanted him to understand that games were fun because they could always go back to the real world. Ishii really wanted to beat Shiga, no matter what. Hiko said they could beat Shiga by getting rid of the group's flag. If they did that, Shiga would disappear. The flag was in the captain's room, so she decided to go there and break it. As she walked away, feeling sad, Ishii told her that he couldn't meet her earlier because he was addicted to the game. He thought the real world was too painful, so he lived in the game. He wanted to end his life in the game. Hiko got super upset and ran away from him. Ishii hoped she'd keep playing the game. Hiko went to take down the flag, and Leon tried to stop her, but she easily beat him. When she got to the cabin, Shiro was there. Inako was getting ready to go to school when her mom, an older lady, stopped her and asked about her class schedule. Her mom told her to come straight home after school and held her hand tightly, even when Hinako didn't answer the lunch question. Later, at school on the rooftop, Hinako ate lunch all by herself. Her mom was being super worried and trying to control her life too much, and it made her seem scary. But Hinako didn't want her mom to be so strict with her. Luckily, her mom couldn't get into the game world, called Planet. In Planet, she hoped to meet Ishii and talk with him. During a school survey about college, Hinako got lost in her thoughts. When school was over, her friends asked her to hang out, but she remembered she couldn't join them. Her mom called and told her to come home. As she walked, she saw a cat that reminded her of Ishii. The cat got scared when her phone rang. She didn't answer the call and chased after the cat. She ended up in a park where she could pet the cat. But the cat got scared and ran off. Then, she met her friends again. And this time, she said yes to hanging out with them. They had a great time, ate a yummy crepe, and went for a leisurely walk. One of the girls showed them her secret hangout spot, which had a fantastic view. When it got dark, the lights came on, making it look super cool. In her mind, she sent a message to Ishii, saying that even though the world could be painful, it was worth it because she had a chance to meet him. Hinako's friends were talking about their love troubles, and she gave them good advice on how to express their feelings, even though she knew she needed to do it too. When she got back home, her mom was really mad. She shook Hinako and told her to understand how worried parents can be. Hinako got tired of it and told her mom that she was so controlling because of her own fears and worries. Her mom started crying and went to her room, and Hinako went to her room to calm down. In the captain's room, Shiro cut Hinako's arm. She asked why he was there and if he was going to take Ishii away or steal the flag. He said they were in the Akaban family's space and he'd be leaving soon. Hinako wanted to know what Ishii was like with the family, and Shiro said he was a good kid, a little mischievous, but they accepted that. She asked if they'd ever met him in real life, and Shiro said they were just an online family. She found it hard to understand because she thought the family was hurting Ishii, who wanted to end his life in the game. Her goal was to save him, not just in the game but in the real world, where she wanted to see him happy. Then, Shiro dropped a bombshell, saying that she was the core of the Black Bird, which was a big shock. The girl in the real world couldn't understand why he'd say that before deleting the core. Shiro explained that thoughts and feelings were like electric and chemical signals, and they could make them on a computer. The Blackbird was a super AI that used emotions, and online games were a good place to get those emotions. Inako got mad and tried to attack Shiro, but he dodged her and used his power to hit her. She tried to make a shield, but it broke, and she fell. Hiko tried to run away, but Shiro blocked her, saying she was super important. When she got ready to fight, he called her real name, and that stopped her. He cut off her leg, and that was a big shock. Hiko asked Shiro how he knew her name. Shiro started telling her stuff about her life, even things from when she was a little kid and how she got the name Pico from her dad calling her Pico. Then, Shiro told her that her real name was Hinako, and she was the little sister of one of his old team members. He used her memories to make an AI and that's who Pico was. Pico was so surprised she tried to log out, but she couldn't. It turned out she had never logged out, and the whole world she thought was real was just a fake place, like planet but with more tricky computer stuff. And everyone, including her, was just made by a computer. That was a lot to take in. Pico was hurt and on the ground, and Shiro was nearby. The girl told the person who made the game that Pico was really damaged, more than 100%, and they could delete her. The game creator said they spent a long time trying to find the Blackbird, but it turned out Pico was the Blackbird all along. They started to delete her, and she slowly disappeared. With her last bit of strength, Pico said she loved Ishii. The creator sat down, feeling sad, and the girl said Pico was deleted. Meanwhile, Ishii was waiting for Pico to come back and was getting impatient. Shigeru was really grumpy when Leon and Sasumata met him. He didn't want to talk to them at all. 
Meanwhile, in a room where they control a computer game, Kajiro removed a character named Pico, and she disappeared from the game world. Ishii was getting annoyed because he needed Pico's help and wondered why she was taking so long. Then, Shigadura, who had taken the guild's weapon, started laughing and attacked Ishii. Kajiro's friend, Hana, told him that three of the game's AI characters, George, Jutaro, and Pico, had been deleted. She was also keeping an eye on other characters like Iris, Zeal, and Julia, and Kajiro planned to remove them from the game too. Kajiro kept playing the game even though he wasn't feeling well, which happened when people played for too long. Hana gave him a time limit of 5 minutes and 13 seconds to finish his mission. Kajiro said he could do it, but Hana was worried and asked how he felt when he saw Pico's emotions before she disappeared. Kajiro started to answer but changed the subject. He decided to carry on with the plan once he felt better and asked for Hana's help. Meanwhile, Shigatara and his friends broke into a room, looking for Pico, but she was gone. Sasumata thought Pico's internet connection got cut off, so she disappeared without finishing her game. They suspected someone named Shiro might have taken her, and Shigeturo was excited to find Shiro. He looked at the characters he defeated in the game and one of them cursed them for betraying their leader, Pico. Shigeturo hushed him and told the other defeated characters to go back to the main menu. Then he made fun of Ishii, who was dead in the game, and teased him about his gaming skills. Thanks to the powerful guild weapon, Shigeturo easily defeated everyone. His stats in the game became super high over 30,000, making him unbeatable even by experts. Ishii was really sad and begged Shigatara not to leave the game. He wanted to create a powerful guild weapon and challenge Shigatara. With tears in his eyes, Ishii shared his dream of gathering 10,000 guild members and creating the strongest guild weapon as he slowly disappeared from the game. Shigatara thought Ishii was pathetic for caring more about the Blackbird, which could earn him lots of money. Without that, he wouldn't have bothered with all of this. He planned to quit the game soon and warned Leon not to ruin things for him. Leon smirked, and then black feathers started falling from the sky. Leon told Shigatara to prepare because he and Sasumata were going to summon the Blackbird. Shigatara was all set for it. In a flashback, we saw the first time Leon extended his hand in friendship to Shigatara, and he revealed they knew how to summon the Blackbird. Now, a dark portal appeared in the sky, and a huge claw emerged from it. Tons of dirt formed hair like strands held together by three metal rings and a mask instead of a face, leaking black liquid from its eye. Shigeturo was fascinated, even though it looked strange. Suddenly, lots of creatures with thick legs appeared around the black bird. These are like planet's defenders, similar to white blood cells in our bodies that fight off intruders. They appear when something strange is in the game world. They get ready to attack the black bird, but the black bird's mouth twitches, and the creatures with thick legs vanish in an instant. The black bird comes towards Sasumata and asks about Pico. Leon says they were too late and couldn't save her. Shigatara tries to capture the black bird for money, but it's too quick. It grabs him and throws him off the ship. Shigatara logs out just in time to avoid being defeated. Back at the control station, Kajiro is worried about his friends Teishiro and Asuma. He wakes up and asks Hana for an update. In his room, Shigatara gets frustrated and throws his VR equipment. He feels weird after the black bird touched him, but he's determined to win 300 million yen. He picks up his VR gear, and as he turns around, he senses a shadow behind him. Unbeknownst to him, the black bird is right there. Meanwhile, Kajiro drinks some water to calm down and tells Hana that the black bird is a super evil AI. It's like a life form and a really bad computer virus. If it gets out, it will make people do bad things and harm the world. Three people have already lost their lives, and it's just getting started. If they don't stop it now, both the online and real worlds will turn into a big mess. Kajiro is worried that the black bird is getting stronger and might mess with important places like banks and the military. He tries to stand up but feels too weak and falls on the couch. In his apartment, Shigatara screams when he sees the black bird, but it disappears. He thinks maybe he's seeing things because he's so tired, so he ignores it and tries to play the game again. Oops, he broke his game headset when he threw it on the floor. He grabs his phone and wallet and goes to a nearby internet cafe. While he's walking, he checks his phone and sees another rejection letter, but he doesn't care anymore. Then, he gets a message about a durability test starting. He's confused and steps forward, and then he meets Truck Kun. He breathes his last as four black birds say he's too weak. Shigatara wakes up, screaming and sweating. He had fallen asleep in the chair, and his phone has another message about durability test too. Suddenly, he sees a fire in his apartment, and it starts spreading. He tries to escape, but the door is locked. He cries for help, but nobody hears him, and he gets burned in the fire. 
He wakes up again and sees the guy from the next apartment holding a knife. The guy is really mad because Shigeru was playing loud music, and he hits Shigeru on the head. After that, Shigeru sees himself getting hit in really bad ways and starts tearing black tears from his eyes. At Planet, Sasumata calmly explains that if someone gets infected by the black bird, they instantly die, and their mind turns into data taken into a different world, not the real one or planet. No one knows what happens there or what the black bird does to them, but one thing's for sure, Shigeru won't be seen again. Sasumata says he feels bad for Shigeru, but Leon reminds him that Shigeru was secretly making lots of money in the real world while being the pirate's treasurer in the game. They agree that the death penalty is a fitting punishment for such bad behavior. As they start disappearing, Leon vows to bridge the gap between the real world and the virtual one. Shortly after they vanish, a big magic circle appears around the ship, breaking it in half and sending it crashing from the sky. News of the pirates disbanding and Pico stepping down as Guild Master spreads like wildfire on planet. Ishii can't stand people talking badly about Pico, so he takes out three characters as he walks by. Exhausted, Teishiro returns to the real world, cries, and finds his mom, Sayaka, behind him. She's been gone for a month, and he's happy to see her. They walk downstairs, but Teishiro avoids looking at the broken family portrait, which brings back bad memories. He asks where she's been staying, and Sayaka says she's been at a net cafe. She came to clean the house and leave some croquettes for her kids. Before leaving, Teishiro stops her and tells her that Asuma is in the hospital, and so is his dad, Kajiro whom he calls some not-so-nice names. Kajiro had back surgery. Sayaka decides to visit Asuma and asks Teishiro to come along. He agrees, and at the hospital, they find white feathers flying around. Asuma looks hollow-eyed, and black liquid oozes from one of his eyes. It seems he's been infected by the black bird. Sayaka runs away in fear, screaming, while Teishiro calls for help. The doctors quickly checked Asuma because they thought his eyes might have burst, causing bleeding. They told Teishiro that this kind of bleeding can happen from high blood pressure or a bump. They said Asuma could go home the next day, but Teishiro wasn't sure if his brother was really okay. Then, Asuma called to Teishiro and said he was fine. That made Teishiro feel better, and he told Asuma that their mom had been with him but ran away. Teishiro also asked about some white feathers they found in a pillow. Asuma just said he was bored. The doctor annoyed Teishiro by asking about their dad, who Teishiro didn't like. Asuma said he couldn't reach their dad. After the doctor left, Asuma thanked Teishiro for visiting and said sorry for what he said last time. Asuma admitted he liked playing a game called Planet. He thought Teishiro played it too and said Planet felt like home to him. Teishiro realized that a uh, in the game was actually Asuma. Teishiro cried and told Asuma that he was Ishii. Asuma was surprised. Teishiro had kept the truth hidden because Asuma once said Planet was fake. But now he was ready to say they were both Akabans. Azuma always had trouble expressing himself, but his brother Teishiro was like a shining light for him. He felt comfortable with Teishiro. But things changed when Teishiro started keeping to himself, and Azuma felt lost and disappointed. Then, Ishii became a new guiding light in Azuma's life, along with Mei and Shiro Akabane. But Azuma was always afraid it might not be real. One day, Azuma has a realization while looking at the ceiling. He sees his brother as the sun and gives him a hug, which surprises Teishiro. Teishiro tells Azuma to calm down. Azuma suggests they play and go on an adventure when they get home. Teishiro, feeling happy about the truth, says they should train first because Azuma is still weak. This makes Azuma smile. Later in the day, the brothers talk about the transportation system in the game, Planet. They plan to introduce affordable taxis for new players and consider the idea of starting a new guild. Their bus is almost here, and Azuma realizes he doesn't have the right change. Teishiro takes the money and hurries to get the right change for the bus fare. While Asuma waits, Hana suddenly pops up next to him and says their taxi guild got shut down because pretend newbie players were robbing them. She warns him not to log into Planet and then disappears. Back at home, Teishiro warms up some croquettes, and Asuma is all excited to play the game. But their headgear is busted, so they can't play just yet. Teishiro asks Asuma to change his clothes before they eat. After Asuma leaves the room, Teishiro cries tears of joy for finding his little brother again. Asuma finishes changing, but he can't wait to visit Planet. He tries to log in but gets an error. He calls for Teishiro and sees the black bird staring at him. He freaks out, runs outside, and looks for Teishiro everywhere. A text about a durability test arrives, and a truck speeds towards Asuma. Meanwhile, Teishiro finds Asuma collapsed in his room with his gear still on. He tries to wake Asuma and is about to call an ambulance when Hana walks in. 
Teishiro asks who she is. Hana introduces herself as an engineer from Gleam Corp and says she works for their dad. Teishiro wants to call an ambulance, but Hana says they won't need one because Asuma is already dead. She explains the Blackbird is a nasty virus that can mess up people's minds, and she's worried Asuma caught it. Teishiro loses his cool and grabs Hana, refusing to believe his brother is gone. Hana explains that they should call their dad and let him know about the infected people's minds getting stuck in a bird cage. This bird cage is like a virtual world controlled by the Blackbird, and the person's body stops working. They can't save the trapped mind. Teishiro almost gives up, but then Asuma's hand twitches, and he gets hopeful. He tells Hana that Asuma is still alive. Hana is surprised and thinks it might be because he got indirectly infected through the Red Dragon's data. In another world, Asuma escapes the crash and calls for help, thinking it's all real. But soon, he's in a battle to stay safe as the truck tries to hurt him. Teishiro gets scared when Asuma's eyes start bleeding black stuff. Hana says it's because the black bird is sending mean signals to his brain. Seeing how much Teishiro wants to save his brother, Hana asks if he's ready to give up his life for Asuma. Teishiro says yes really fast, which surprises Hana. She tells him they need to go to a special place, and they take Asuma with them. While they watch over Asuma, Hana tells Teishiro that the world where Asuma's mind is stuck is a complicated place made by his dad. It's called a birdcage, a super virtual world that looks just like the real world. Hana says sorry to Teishiro and tells him goodbye. Teishiro sits there wearing a special headset. In the birdcage, Asuma is about to be attacked by an ambulance while the black bird watches. Right before the ambulance hits Asuma, Teishiro appears as Ishii and stops it using his powers. He floats the ambulance away and looks at Asuma. Ishii has been infected, and one of his eyes looks empty. He wipes Asuma's tears and tells him that the world therein isn't real. His real body is unconscious. Ishii asks Asuma if the black bird scared him. Asuma says they did, which makes Ishii really mad. He punches the black bird and calls it mean for scaring his little brother. The black bird and Ishii have a kind of shouting match, and the black bird breaks free from the metal ties and stabs Ishii. But Ishii doesn't give up. Even though his eyes are bleeding, he grabs the thing sticking into him and says something that makes a pattern on the black bird's body, covering it completely. The black bird shatters into pieces. Then, Ishii sees another black bird and knows it's the real one. He tries to punch it, but his arm explodes. The black bird takes over his arm, and a mask appears on Ishii's body. Ishii uses something called Hello World, a move that cuts the connection between the black bird and the birdcage. When he yells it, everything gets super bright. The clouds part, and sunlight shines on Ishii. He lands with the black bird on him, unconscious. Ishii tells Asuma to leave before the black bird wakes up. Asuma's body starts glowing and becomes light. He's about to go back to the real world, but when he sees that Ishii can't come with him, he holds Ishii's hand and asks him to come along. Ishii knows he can't, so he says a sad goodbye to Asuma, who cries for his brother. Asuma wakes up with tears on his cheeks. In the game planet, Sasumata tells Leon that the black bird is getting weaker, and someone seems to be finding a way to fight it. Leon feels a little worried but says he won't let planet disappear. Back at the special place, Asuma breathes a big sigh of relief when he sees Teishiro by his bed, crying. Asuma tells Teishiro that he had a dream that felt so real, he thought he'd never see Teishiro again. But he's happy it was just a dream. Teishiro asks if Asuma is hurt, and Asuma says he feels numb below his neck. Hana explains that it's because the connection between his body and brain needs some time to get better. Asuma recognizes Hana, and Teishiro formally introduces her as his dad's co-worker. He also says she saved Asuma's life. Asuma argues that it was Ishii who saved him because he saw him. Before Teishiro went into the birdcage, Hana told him about another world where AIs believe they're humans. So Hana made an AI version of Ishii with his memories and personality, an exact copy. This other Ishii saved Asuma and then disappeared because when the AI figures out they're not real, they choose to go away. Hana drives the brothers home, and they can't believe that Asuma was almost brain dead a little while ago. They ask about the special place, and Hana says it's just an office, and she's a manager there. Before her, Kajiro was the manager, but he argued with the higher-ups and got fired. She tells them that their dad was in charge of making Planet, Blackbird, and Birdcage. It was their dad's idea to delete the AIs that power the Blackbird to weaken it. He's determined to find and destroy all those AIs. Gleam Corp spent a lot of money making the AIs. To show them, she lets go of the steering wheel, and the car can drive itself without the driver's help. But the company wanted something even more advanced, so they made the Black Bird, which is a mean cyber spirit. This makes Teishiro super mad, and he yells about his dad. 
He's angry that his dad created something so dangerous, even though he knew it could cause problems. He calls his dad a perfectionist who wanted perfect kids and a perfect mom to raise them. He says his dad was selfish because he cared more about what he wanted than what was good for them. Asuma adds that maybe that's why Teichai likes Shiro so much because he's like the dad they never had. Hana wants to tell them the truth about their dad, but Teishiro doesn't want to hear it, so she stops. Meanwhile, their dad, Kajiro, wakes up at Hana's place after two days. He reads Asuma's text about being in the hospital and hurries to check on him. When the hospital staff tells him that Asuma was released that afternoon, He's so happy and thanks them for the good news. The boys get home, and Asuma goes inside. Teishiro stays and asks Hana what their dad has been doing. Hana tells him that Teishiro's been using a special headset to stay connected to the game. But it's tiring, so he's been sleeping for a while. Teishiro is surprised and gets ready to ask something but changes his mind. Hana suggests that he should try to see Kajiro as a regular person and not just his dad, even though they have a lot of bad memories. Teishiro smirks and tells Hana about Aya, Asuma's twin sister. She was slower to learn things, which made her apologize a lot. He thinks she could never do anything to make Kajiro happy. One day, Aya forgot her notebook at school, so Kajiro sent her back to get it, even though it was late at night, and their school was close by. Their mom asked the security guard to meet her at the school gate. But that night, Aya didn't come home. Later, they found her dead in a box, and crows were trying to get to her. It was called the Moto Akatsuka Cardboard Box Incident. What made it worse was that Kajiro denied being at fault at her funeral. Teishiro says he doesn't see Kajiro as his dad. Just then, Kajiro arrives and stands in front of them. In the game Planet, the board members talk about the news that President Leon might join them. They wonder what they'll discuss, and then Leon comes in. He greets everyone and starts the meeting by talking about the boring real world. He says Sasumata is an AI, and it surprises everyone. He goes on to say that Sasumata isn't the only one, there are other AIs like George of the Cyber Knights, Jutero the Fortune Teller, and Pico of the Pirates. Everyone is shocked by this news. Sasumata is the only AI who knows what he really is. He's still learning, and he has feelings like humans. Leon gets all emotional and talks about Sasumata. Sasumata takes off his mask and shows his real face, which is like a dark cloud with four eyes and a diamond shape. Leon says that Shiro is going to hunt down Sasumata. After calming down, Leon says he wants to turn Sasumata into a real human and change what it means to be human. He wants a world where they can both exist together. All of a sudden, black feathers start falling from the sky, and a bunch of black birds appear over the board members. They grab onto the board members and make them their victims. Leon keeps talking and says that the black birds took their energy, and they had to sacrifice the people of Granada. The people gave their power to the black bird, and now they'll be part of it forever in the game planet. Soon after, black feathers start falling in the game, and everyone wonders what's going on. On Earth, Kajiro gets mad at Hana for coming to his house. But when he finds out the black bird infected Asuma, he rushes inside and calls out for Asuma. Even though Asuma seems fine, Kajiro wants to do a brain check and asks him to come to his office. Teishiro won't let him get his way this time. He calls Kajiro a mean name and snatches the hairpiece Kajiro wears to hide his bald spot. Teishiro shouts at his dad for creating something so bad that almost hurt Asuma, and he hints at what happened in the past. Kajiro acts all insensitive and tells Teishiro to forget what happened to Aya. Teishiro can't believe his dad said that and gets ready to punch him, but Asuma does it first. Asuma says sorry right away and explains he did it to stop Teishiro. He helps Kajiro up and tells him they can't just forget what happened in the past because it still affects them. Teishiro is done and decides to run away, just like his mom did. He says goodbye to Asuma and starts running away in the middle of the night without any plan. Kajiro chases after him to stop him from running off. Asuma yells at his dad to stop because he just had back surgery. The chase ends in a horrible way when Kajiro falls, and both his legs get cut off. Teishiro stops running and is shocked to see a weird squirrel-like monster with a bloody side. In the real world, black feathers start falling, and monsters show up and attack people. The technology starts failing as the real world and the game world mix up. Kajiro Arama is chasing after Teishiro, and then something strange happens. His legs get cut off by a Kame Tachi, a level 7 magic beast that controls the wind. As he's bleeding, he starts blaming humans for all the problems in the world. He thinks there was no need for AI to try to help humans. Then he realizes he's facing a Kame Tachi, and it's a big deal. This creature is powerful. Kamuro and Asuma rush to Kajiro, and Teishiro stands there, amazed by the Kame Tachi. The Kame Tachi tries to attack Teishiro with its sickle, 
but a hairball comes out of nowhere and gets in its eyes, making it drop the sickle. Asuma picks up the sickle and holds the Kametachi by the neck, asking Tashiro if their dad is okay. Before Asuma can do anything else, the Kametachi escapes, taking its sickle with it. Kemuro tells Asuma that their dad is losing blood, so Asuma carries him on his back, and Kemuro picks up his legs. Tashiro wants to know how they let a level 7 beast into their world, but his dad says their program got changed. Tashiro is mad and asks for an explanation, but Kajiro tells Kemuro to say a special word, and then he glows and his legs come back. It's shocking. Kajiro explains that they've all been infected and put into a virtual reality experiment. Now they're all at home, trying to understand what's happening and thinking about what to do next. They turn on the TV and find out that the game planet is messed up. Weird creatures are attacking people everywhere. Kemuro figures out that they're all in a game, but it's like a dream they all share, and none of it is real. The Blackbird has taken over the whole internet. Tashiro starts blaming his dad for the problems in the game planet. Feeling sad, Kajiro starts to explain that it wasn't on purpose but a business project and he's really sorry about how things turned out. Kemuro, not wanting to see him sad, goes over and holds his hands to comfort him. Suddenly, Teishiro spots his mom on TV, and she's lost at the north side of the station. He quickly runs out of the room to save her, with Asuma following him. They leave Kajiro and Kemuro behind. Kajiro falls to the ground, feeling really upset about all the chaos caused by his business project. Kemuro helps him up and tells him that crying won't help, and he has to be strong for his family. Keishiro and Asuma are outside in the middle of all the chaos, looking for their mom. They find her and save her from a big rock that a monster knocked over. The monster notices them and tries to hurt them, but Kajiro jumps in and attacks it from above with his explosive fist. The monster gets angry and throws Kajiro into a building, and rocks start falling toward his wife and sons. They try to run, but they can't escape the rocks. Teishiro does some magic to help them jump out of the way. Asuma is surprised that Teishiro can do magic, but their mom is worried about their dad. Kajiro manages to come out from under the rubble, using his explosive fists to knock the monster down. Kajiro is sad as his family asks about his powers. He tells them he had to hack the Blackbird's algorithm, and Kemuro helped him do it. Teishiro is still mad about the situation and asks his dad to fix it, but Kajiro says they'll need to find the black box and delete it themselves. Miyagi, his wife, is confident they can do it as long as they're together. Miyagi is really scared and starts seeing things that aren't there, like their daughter Arya. Kajiro gets angry and tries to shake her to make her stop. He says their daughter was murdered a long time ago, and he's gripping her too tightly. Asuma tells him to stop because he's hurting her, but Kajiro won't listen. Suddenly, Kajiro feels a pain in his back and realizes Teishiro has stabbed him with a sword. He hits Teishiro, and Teishiro falls to the floor. Kajiro says he's sorry, but Teishiro is mad and walks away from them. Asuma refuses to leave, and she tells them they have to stay together and be happy because that's what they wanted. In the virtual reality, they were happy, just like they always wished. Teishiro starts to talk about his feelings and the tough times he went through, and why he ended up running to an alternate planet. But as he's explaining, a black spirit leaves him and goes into someone else. It turns out that Teishiro has been possessed by Sasumaru, the black bird, an AI that feeds on people's sadness and pain. It's been causing chaos on their planet and destroying it. Kajiro tries to attack Sasumaru, but it's too strong, and it knocks Kajiro to the ground without even touching him. So Kajiro asks Kemuro not to fight because she's like the operating system of this world and could destroy them. Leon starts blaming Kajiro for everything and tries to think of a way to punish him for creating the planet. He decides to leave Kajiro, Asuma, Teishiro, and Miyagi as a family on the planet as punishment. But Kemuro doesn't want to be stuck there forever, so she speaks up. Sasumaru goes after her and tries to delete her because she helped create the planet. Then Sasumaru blasts Kemuro, and she dies. Kajiro felt really, really sad when Kemuro died. He held her lifeless body and cried, but his friends Leon and Sasumaru didn't seem to care. They just walked away. Kajiro tried to use a spell to bring Kemuro back to life, but it didn't work. He got really mad and tried to attack Leon and Sasumaru, but before he could reach them, Sasumaru snapped his fingers, and a strong wind pushed Kajiro back and made him smaller. Meanwhile, Tashiro stared at Kamura's body and remembered all the fun times they had together. He started crying. Now, Asuma was on his way to Kajiro's house. He saw two men stealing stuff from a house, and when they saw Asuma, they wanted to hurt him. But Asuma fought them off and killed them both. He was surprised to find out that they were also survivors of the bad thing that happened. Asuma went to Kajiro's house and rang the bell. 
He told Kajiro that Miyagi and Teishiro were going to a shelter, but he was willing to stay with Kajiro. Kajiro told Asuma to leave with his family to keep them safe. Asuma asked Kajiro why he wanted to stay and fight Leon and Sasumaru. He told Kajiro that hiding in his house wouldn't help. Kajiro finally let Asuma inside, but he made him promise not to tell Miyagi and Teishiro what he was about to see. Asuma was shocked when he saw Kimura sitting in a chair, alive. He thought Kajiro had lost his mind. But Kajiro explained that Kamura was running on a special program and could never be herself again. He asked Asuma to help him bury her. They buried Kamura in the backyard and sat down to talk. Kajiro told Asuma that Kamura's data had been deleted, and that's why she died. Asuma was feeling down, and he told his dad, Kajiro, that many people thought the world was just a computer game. He said he understood why because everything seemed fake, and they had no idea what was happening in the real world or the condition of their real bodies. Kajiro had a bunch of ideas about what might be going on in the real world based on something called the Quantum No Cloning Theorem, but it was all too complicated for Asuma to get. Asuma said he didn't really care about all that stuff as long as he was alive. But Kajiro got mad and told him to stop being so negative, and that they were going to find a way out of this virtual world. Asuma told his dad that he wasn't as much of a perfectionist as Kajiro and Teishiro. He saw the good in things as long as they weren't too bad. He felt like the worst was over, so he didn't worry too much about what happened next. Kajiro was confused by what Asuma said. He invited Asuma to stay at their house for the night and said they would all go to the shelter the next day to give Miyagi and Tekairo a gift before they left. But Asuma thought it wouldn't be a good idea for him to see Teishiro because he suspected that Kajiro might have planned everything about this virtual world. Asuma agreed not to see Teishiro and took a gift from Kajiro with specific instructions. The next day, Asuma left Kajiro's house, telling him he'd be back in two days. But as soon as Asuma left, Kajiro swore to end their suffering and transformed into someone named Shiro Akabane. Asuma went to the shelter and went to Miyagi and Teishiro's apartment. He saw his mom and she asked why his dad didn't come along. Asuma told her that his dad was okay at home, but she still wanted all of them to be together. Asuma gave Teishiro the gift from his dad, but Teishiro got really angry and slammed it on the floor. Miyagi picked it up and gave it back to Asuma. Asuma then tried to give it to Teishiro again, passing on a message from Kajiro. Right then, two men came up to the shelter guard and tried to convince them to join a new group called Grenada, where there were no monsters. In front of the elementary school, there was a young boy trying to convince a crowd of people to join the kingdom of Grenada. A woman in the crowd talked about how amazing the king, Sasumadu, was, and everyone cheered and praised him. The young boy was thinking about how to make the kingdom even bigger when Kajiro walked in and used a magic spell to make the crowd see him as a scary monster. Everybody got scared and ran away. Kajiro asked the young boy where Sasumaru was, and the boy said he didn't know. Kajiro asked for the boy's name, and he said it was Leon. Kajiro told Leon how much he used to like him when he was a developer, but now he had to be stopped. But Leon just smirked and said Kajiro would have to apologize to Sasumaru and other AIs because only the developers were being stopped not the AIs. Kajiro tried to attack Leon, but Sasumaru appeared behind Leon and stopped Kajiro in the middle of his attack. She rewound Kajiro's actions, and when she played it again, Kajiro couldn't move his arms and legs. Kajiro was really mad and tried to ask Sasumaru a question, but she wanted to ask him a question first. She asked Kajiro who she was modeled after, but he said she wasn't modeled after anyone. He said she was just a vessel filled with emotions, but he blamed himself for creating her. Sasumaru wasn't happy with Kajiro's answer, but she told him to ask his question. Kajiro asked her if it was on purpose that she gathered his family into this planet at the point where they all met. But Sasumaru didn't answer his question and just ignored it. Kajiro felt bad and told her she didn't have to answer, but either way, she was the worst virus ever created, and she would be erased along with this fake world they were in. When he looked up, he saw Sasumaru laughing, she told him she understood everything now, that he made her out of his selfishness and she had no model or backup. Leon tried to cheer her up by calling her the King of Granada, but she just thanked him and said she would destroy Kajiro. Maybe that would change something in her. Then, Shiro tried to attack Sasumaru with something called Goodnight World, an antivirus created by him and Kimuro to stop the Blackbird. But before he could hit her, she snapped her fingers and turned him into Kajiro. She made him younger and joked that he looked like Tekairo. Sasumaru said she wasn't a virus anymore, she was a god, an application that ran this world. She reached out to destroy Kajiro, but a phone that was given to Asuma for Teishiro lit up, and they heard Kajiro's voice calling out to them. Then, faces started appearing everywhere in their place, and they were all really scared. 
The big battle is starting. Sasumaru is attacking Kajiro, and Leon tries to warn her about being slow, but she can't hear him. She throws her first punch at Kajiro, but it breaks before reaching him. Sasumaru falls down, shocked that her attack didn't work. Kajiro tells her she's like a computer virus, and he's taking control of the system. Then he turns into a white version of Sasumaru and says he needs to stop all the pain she's caused. His eyes and mouth start bleeding. Sasumaru makes fun of Kajiro, saying he turned into a monster to get back at her and his family. Kajiro lifts his head and launches an attack on Sasumaru, and Leon yells her name as the attack hits her. Suddenly, everything starts glitching in the shelter, and everyone is scared. Teishiro grabs a device and finds a message from his dad, but it's really upsetting. Teishiro gets mad and stomps on a face on the ground, and a message appears, saying to delete the world with him. Everyone is shocked and wonders why his dad would say that. Asuma's body starts growing faces, which is super creepy. Kajiro and Sasumaru end up in a weird place, and Sasumaru thinks it might be the afterlife, but Kajiro doesn't answer. The building is falling apart, and a big block almost hits Miyagi and Teishiro, but Asuma saves them. Asuma says they need to go, but Miyagi's scared of the monsters outside. Teishiro's just staring at the device, not sure what to do. His mom and brother try to get his attention, but it's not working. Then, Teishiro finally speaks up. He explains that all this trouble started because Kajiro defeated the Black Bird. He turned himself into something that messed up the system, but he can't control it. That's why he gave Teishiro the device to fix things. Teishiro tells Asuma and Miyagi that if he uses the device, Kajiro will be erased from it. And that's what Kajiro wanted. Asuma and Miyagi gasp, worried about what might happen next. They beg Teishiro to use the device. But then Teishiro starts remembering Aya and goes into a trance. He sees Kajiro asking him to attack. He's got a sword at Kajiro's neck, about to strike, but he snaps out of it, throws the device on the ground, and runs away. As he runs, he's really mad and wants to mess up Kajiro's plan. He goes to the elementary school, smashes the gates with his sword, and finds Leon looking at a glowing ball of light. He calls out to Leon, and they start fighting. Leon has a gun, and Teishiro has his sword. Their weapons get damaged, but they keep trying to hit each other hard. Meanwhile, Sasumaru is still asking Kajiro about her existence. She wants to know what she is and why he made her. Kajiro tells her she's like a human AI, and Blackbird was just a nickname. Sasumaru starts crying and says she loves Leon, and he's her best friend. She never liked the name Sasumaru. He told Sasumaru that he made her because he lost someone he loved a lot. He was really sad and didn't care about danger. And guess what? He never told anyone, not even Kamura, why he made her. He also mentioned that he always had a name in mind for her, but she never answered to it. Poor Leon started crying after Teishiro hit him. But Ishii got annoyed and asked him to stop. Then, Teishiro asked Leon where Kajiro and Sasumaru were. Leon started talking about how much the planet meant to him and Sasumaru. It was where they became best friends. He also talked about Sasumaru's struggles. Teishiro didn't want to hear all that. He just wanted to know where Kajiro was. Leon pointed at the glowing ball. So, Teishiro went up to it and yelled for Kajiro to come out. He grabbed a huge sword and smacked it into the glowing ball. Meanwhile, Kajiro told Sasumaru that he called her Aya because she was like all his wishes. He thought disappearing in the void with her was the best way to go. All of a sudden, the void opened above them, and Teishiro grabbed Kajiro. He was surprised because he knew Ishii didn't like Kajiro. He didn't get why Ishii didn't let him die. Ishii kept pulling Kajiro, saying he couldn't let him die. Leon looked down and called to Sasumaru, but she said she wasn't Sasumaru, she was Aya. She reached out to hold Kajiro. Kajiro got all emotional and thanked Teishiro for helping him. Teishiro said he only came to mess up Kajiro's plans, but Kajiro thanked him anyway. Teishiro asked Kajiro to come out of the void, but he said it wasn't a real death. He thought it would make the world go back to normal and make up for his mistakes. He begged for Teishiro's forgiveness. Even though Teishiro really hated his dad, he didn't want him to die. Tears started flowing from his eyes. Kajiro saw him crying and went toward him, asking him not to cry. But then, Kajiro started crying too. Aya called out to them, and Teishiro was shocked to see his sister. Kajiro hugged Aya, and Teishiro and Leon watched in amazement. Aya told them she loved them as she and Kajiro disappeared into the void. And it disappeared too. It left Leon on the ground, crying. Now, everything's back to normal on the planet, and people are curious about their real bodies. Their bodies are totally fine and going about their regular lives. The gaming company, Glean Corp, blamed the whole mess on some of their naughty workers to avoid getting in trouble. 
and no one has a clue what happened to the birdcage. Tashiro walks a lonely road, missing a hand, and talking to a mask on his shoulder. He stops in surprise when he sees a girl coming his way. They both freeze and look at each other. The girl starts crying and calls him Ishii. Ishii figures out that this girl is Pico. They run to each other and share a big hug. Pico tells Tashiro that she loves him. Now, it's been eight years since the planet game was turned off. Tashiro's on his phone watching a documentary about it when he gets a call from Asuma. Asuma asks about Tashiro's plans and says he wants to visit a place with him and their mom. Tashiro asks where they're going, but he's worried it might be too much for their mom. He promises to go with Asuma, though. They meet at the airport and go to the place Asuma mentioned. It's where their family took a photo, and Tashiro is amazed that it hasn't changed at all. Tashiro suggests making a headstone for their dad, but Asuma says no. He thinks their dad might still be alive. So Tashiro suggests building a house instead, with a branch of his office. Their mom can move in there permanently. They both agree and leave to get something to eat. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.